الله الذي تزاءلون به والألهام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وكلوا قولا سديدا يصلحكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد إن أذكى الهديد كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم وشار أمور مهدثاتها وكل مهدثة بدع وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار ثم أما بعد يا عباد الله أخوتي وأخواتي في الإسلام أسيكم وإياي بالتقوى فإن الله ما متقين O servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and brothers and sisters we should be at this point on this mashallah the 14th day of the blessed month of Ramadan we should be at this point be in Allah truly recognizing and understanding that we are indeed ibad Allah we are the servants of Allah Indeed, we are the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I advise you and myself to strive for the quality of taqwa. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained and declared and preserved until masha'Allah in his book, Inna Allah ma muttaqeen. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with those whom they possess this quality. Nahmudullah wa nashkuruhu ala nirmat al-Islam. Indeed, brothers and sisters, we endeavor to establish the praise and the glorification of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as is the right of Allah, and this is an endeavor that we will never fulfill. We will never fulfill the haqq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, regardless of what we do. So therefore we have to understand the reality of our a'mal. That our actions, our deeds that we do, that they are not the maqsa, they are not the purpose that we are striving for. But they are, I mean, wasa'il, they are a ways and means to strive for the purpose that we are striving for. And that, brothers and sisters, is this, this commodity, this very, very esoteric commodity that we cannot touch we cannot see, we cannot put it on the scale, we cannot give it a value. But it is indeed the most important thing that we can acquire and accumulate and possess and protect. A taqwa. That we have this quality of taqwa. <laughs> and the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the hidayah has given us, mashallah, that seed which compelled us to be in this place on this day at this time. Why are we here? And now shagali, the people are busy, 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 busy. Millions of people busy right around us, just right here in South Florida. But we have taken the time to come here to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fulfill the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to establish the Jummah in accordance with the teaching and the practice of the Messenger alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Where did that come from? Had the tawfiq min indillah. Yahdi man yasha ila salatin mustaqeen. So we have to show our gratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has given us that tawfiq. And that gratitude expresses itself, manifests itself in everything be it that we do. This is a condition of the believer. So mashallah to barakallah, we have completed almost one half of the month of Ramadan. And this is a time for myself and for each of us for some self-reflection. Where are 
are we in regard to Halisha and this month, this blessed month, and the purpose of our fasting in this month, that Allah SWT made it very clear for us so that there is no ambiguity, there is no confusion. The fasting has been written for you. We know what the fasting is, al imsak Al-Imsaq ala kulu mutafajurat, yani min al-asr wa al-shurat wa shahawat, min tulul fajr ila gurub al-shams. Yes, we know what fasting is technically, that we abstain from all of those things, from anything that breaks the fast, from anything we eat or drink or desire during the daylight hours from the, the first light of dawn until the sun sets. But this is not the maqsad of Ramadan. This is not the purpose of Ramadan. The purpose of Ramadan, that we may gain the quality of taqwa. And the Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu salam, he said to us what? At-taqwa ha huna. At-taqwa ha huna. At-taqwa ha huna. Wa ashara ila qalbihi ya ila sadrihi salat. And he pointed to his chest three times. Sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The taqwa brothers and sisters, you won't find it on the internet. You won't find it in the cupboard, you won't find it in your wallet, in your degree. You will only find it where? In your heart. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who knows what is in the heart. No one knows what is in your heart except you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you, wa'iyyadu billah, you are I, we may deceive ourselves by what, by regarding what is in our heart, but we can never deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> The Messenger of Allah alayhi salatu salam, he mentioned in a very well-known hadith, a fairly long hadith, but for today's purpose, I only want to mention the last part of the hadith. This hadith collected by Imam Bukhari and also Imam Muslim, <coughs> rahimahuma Allah, that the Prophet sallallahu quoted to have said, Allah wa inna fil jasidim yani mudgha. إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَتَ الْجَسَدُ قُلُّهُ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ قُلُّهُ أَلَا وَإِنَّ هِيَ الْقَلْبُ MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. This is from the, MashaAllah, the, the wisdom and the gift that Allah SWT gave the Prophet SAW, Jawam al-Kalam. He said just a few words, alayhi wa salatu salam, and give us such a profound understanding and meaning. Is it not the reality that in the body there is a piece of flesh, an organ? And we know that yes, there are many organs in the body. But here the Prophet is referring to one in particular. And he said that salahat, if this particular organ is pure and clean, then the whole body becomes pure and clean. And if this particular organ is polluted or corrupted, then the whole body becomes polluted and corrupted. Is it our lungs? Is it the pancreas? Is it the kidneys? Is it the spleen? Is it the liver? Allah Is it not the fact that is it, it is indeed the heart? And that's what we have to be concerned about, ya ikhwan wa akhwat. What is the condition of our hearts after 14 days, mashallah, of fasting in the blessed month of Ramadan? After 14 days in the, the midst, mashallah, enveloped by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, فُتِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ الْجَنَّةِ وَقُلِحَتْ أَبْوَابُ النَّارِ وَسُسِلَتْ الشَّيَاتِينَ That the doors of the paradise are opened the doors of the hellfire are closed, the shayateen are chained, that we have every opportunity now to gain this commodity of taqwa, this elusive commodity that resides in our hearts. What have we done to gain it? What are we benefiting from it? How are we checking and seeing where are we in relation to where we were in the beginning of Ramadan? When we leave the masjid, when we come back home at night after Tarawih, 
Do we think about something before we say it to our spouses, to our children? Do we make the intention that before I sleep or I will get up before the time of Sahur and I will devote some time of solitude between me and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do we ponder and contemplate on the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on our sin until the tears flow from our eyes? What is the condition of our hearts? Because this is the key to the success. Every one of us, we want success. Mashallah. Nurid al Fos Yom al Kiyama. Nurid, mashallah, makan alia fi jannat al Firdos. And we want success on Yom al Kiyama. We want a place high in the heavens, in the highest heaven, and Firdos bi idnillah. But we have to make the effort to establish what Allah SWT would have us to establish. And that, brothers and sisters, is the taqwa that resides in the heart. And when we talk about taqwa, then of course, this is an, an, an Arabic term, a very beautiful term that is inclusive. We cannot talk about taqwa without talking about iman. We cannot talk about taqwa without talking about hope. And the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa khawf, wa khashya, and the fear of the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We cannot talk about taqwa without talking about husnul khuluq, about good character. We cannot talk about taqwa without talking about, and in fact, fi sabilillah, spending in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because the person who has taqwa embodies everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves in the believers, in the human being. And therefore, he has written for us the fasting. So brothers and sisters, we have to be aware. We have to be concerned. We have to do the self-evaluation that where are we in relationship to when we began this blessed month of Ramadan. And we cannot make that evaluation by how many invitations we garnered or how many culinary delicacies we tasted, or how many raka we prayed in, surat, in Salat al-Tarawih. Because, mashallah, those things that they are wasa'il, that they are and it, a ways and means, they are not the end. The end is what is the condition of our hearts. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and the day will come. It is promised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never breaks his promise. That that day will come when there will be no benefit from your wealth or your progeny. Except that the one who comes in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be salim. We see that reference again. The Prophet sallallahu told us, Allah wa inna hiya al Is it not indeed the heart? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that whatever we accumulated in this life from wealth and progeny will not benefit fit us on that day except that the one who comes to Allah with a pure heart. So brothers and sisters, mashallah, tabarakallah, we have been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the ways and means of working to acquire that invaluable commodity of taqwa in this blessed month of Ramadan. And subhanAllah, half of it, illa mashallah, is already gone. We have the other half remaining in the Rabbana Ahyana, if Allah gives us life. So we have to be aware, we have to be conscious of that reality and make sure that we are checking the condition of our heart. When that's Allah to people earth, I call it call it had was stuff for a lot of people stuff for you in the other. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam wa rasulillahi wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala wa ashadu an la ilahi wa allahu wa ahduhu la sharika la wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa ba 
Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us in his book a ways and means that we can do the self-evaluation because only we can do it for ourselves. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that who are the ones that they truly have Iman. And as I mentioned, Iman and Taqwa, that they are inseparable. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bada a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytani rajeem. Innama al-mu'minuna al-lazina idha dhukir Allah wajilat kulubuhum. Wa idha tuliyat alayhim ayatahu zadathum imana wa ala rabbihim yatawakkalun. الذين يقيمون الصلاة ومما رزقناهم ينفقون أولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم ومغفرة ورزق كريم ثلاثة آيات brothers and sisters من سورة الأنفال where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us a description of whom the believers and you cannot be a mu'min unless you have the quality of taqwa. <coughs> Who are the believers? Allah SWT says that very, in the English meaning that verily the believers are those whom when the name of Allah SWT is mentioned, either look at Allah, wajilat kulubu, that their hearts shake. Their hearts shake from the acknowledgement, the recognition of who is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whose name was just mentioned. The one that gave them life will take their souls at death. The one who holds the khayr in his hands, subhanahu wa ta'ala, that everything is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Everything depends on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our very existence and our success in this life and the next is according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Therefore, when the believer hears the name of Allah, that their hearts cannot stay in the same state. And you're talking about the business, you're talking with the family, you're talking about the politics, talking about the news of the day, and then you remember Allah. You say, subhanAllah, la ilaha illallah. Someone, you hear the Quran, you hear the name of Allah, your heart immediately should change. Is this happening? Because this month of Ramadan, that we are hearing the ayat of Allah, we are hearing the ayat of Allah SWT every night when we stand in Taraweeh. We listen to the ayat of Allah. Our iman should be increasing because this is a quality of the believers. So we should be able to feel that. We should be able to, to recognize that and know that, mashallah, I am moving in the right direction. That joke I would have said two, years, two, uh, two weeks ago, I left it. I don't want to say it now. That bad word that I may have uttered a month ago, I will not let it pass through my lips. That scowl that I used to give my family when I come home, now I will make sure that I smile for them. MashaAllah, that sadaqah that I keep promising myself that I know I should give it for my akhirah, I'm not going to delay any longer, any longer. And azar, these are the, mashallah, the signs of iman. That they, wa'ala rabbihim yatawakkalun, and they depend upon their Lord. We know, brothers and sisters, that everything is coming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That it is not our intellect, it is not our strength, it is not our cleverness, it is not our husband or wife, it is not our education. But whatever we have been able to accomplish is from the barakah, mashallah, the mercy, the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when we want to do anything, first and foremost, nisab Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We the sa'al We the sa'al fasayin billah. And if you ask, ask Allah. If you seek help, seek help from Allah. Depend upon your Lord. الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ That those whom they establish the salah, and from what we have given them, they spend for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. أُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ حَقَّ That indeed, in truth, 
These are the believers. How the kalam of Allah. Who knows who the believers are if it is not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Al-A'lamu And who knows more? We are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows who in truth are the believers. They are the ones that they have these qualities. That they will have darajat. They will have, mashallah, levels of honor, prestige with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah bi idnillah. Wa maghfira. Without which none of us can ever be successful. Without the forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa kareem and mashallah, a generous provision. Call al ulama fi dunya wa fi al-akhirah. And in this dunya and in the akhirah. So brothers and sisters, we have to do some self-evaluation. Where are we, mashallah, with half of the month gone behind us and half of it be idnillah in front of us? That are we truly seeing the result? Are we feeling, mashallah, the increase in the iman, in the taqwa? And if it is there, believe me, it will manifest in everything that we do. From what issues from our tongues to what we allow ourselves to listen to, to how we deal with our parents, our spouses, our children, our neighbors, our society, in everything that we do. So brothers and sisters, mashallah, tabarakallah, Allah has blessed me to come here today and be with you, representing an organization, Ikna Relief USA, Islamic Circle of North America. And inshallah ta'ala, we are doing the good work here in Florida and throughout the country that we have been able to do by, um, by mashallah, the, the mercy from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then the help and support of our brothers and sisters, inshallah ta'ala. So I'm asking you to please just remain a few minutes after the Salah, inshallah ta'ala, and just to have a few brief words to share with you, and, and inshallah ta'ala, so that we can all in the and in the taqwa, that we can, inshallah ta'ala, help and support one another in establishing the bir and in establishing, mashallah, the taqwa. And that's Allah tafiq wa ta'ala. Inna Allah wa malaikudu yusalluna ala nabi. Ya ayyuhal adhina aminu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حامد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وكنا ضب النار ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد زديتنا وهب لنا من دونك رحمة إنك أنت وهاب اللهم تقبل منا سيامنا وقيامنا يا أهل الرحيمين اللهم كل المؤمنين والمسلمات مسلمين مسلمات الأحياء منهم وأموات يا الله إخواننا وأخواتنا في كل مكان يا الله في سوريا يا الله في أفغانستان في فلسطين يا الله في في إيران يا الله في في ميانمار يا الله في في ليبيا في مصر يا الله في كل مكان أنت أعلم بهم يا الله يا الله ثبت أقدامهم يا الله وتقبل منهم صيامهم وقيامهم يا أهل الرحمين وألف بين قلوبهم لا ذا جلال ورقام يا الله وانصرهم على داء وداء دين فإنك على كل شيء قدير سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله والآله وصحبه أجمعين وكيف السلام